right, what's up guys? Uh, today is going to be the last day, be the last camping trip for the for our Coleman Lantern LT 7 So uh, we're going to go to Missouri and film a little bit, have a lot of fun. We're going to be on the river. Uh, no float trip, no canoe trip, just going to hang out on the river. But uh, we're going to have a good time. It's supposed to be really nice this weekend. So um, follow us on this one. We'll do a campsite review and uh, let you know what's coming up next for us. What's up? Uh, just going to jump in here real fast. Um, we didn't really get any footage of the actual campground or our campsite. Um, but it was really, it was like 8.30 when we got there and it was dark and I wouldn't have got a pull in um, video anyways. But um, I have a map. I have our little site map. Um, and we'll just walk around it uh, in a second. But the next little clip, we went to a town that's called Caledonia. Probably, I don't know, I'm probably saying that wrong. And um, we stumbled across a fall festival that we really weren't anticipating. We were going there to, to their old village mercantile, which is like a big candy shop. And then they got um, coffee and ice cream and stuff in there too. But it's more of a sightseeing thing. So um, that's where we're heading to in this next little clip. Uh, after that's done, there's some river footage, I think. But uh, I'll do a... a slight walk through just on our little map and um kind of talk this one up because it was a really good campground we're probably going to end up back there next spring uh summer a couple times it's not all that far away and uh, it was a really nice place whoa did we hit this at a festival time Now. Keep your feet in front of you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I'm editing this video right now. And like I said, I didn't get any footage of the campground, but I have our little site map. And um, the black line is our campsite. But um, 
and right here it says Onondaga State Park. Now right in this area is Onondaga Cave. Um, it's pretty cool to explore that um, from what I've heard and the stuff I've read online. So um, if you're into that kind of stuff, there's definitely stuff to do. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but you cross the river, and if you've never been down to Missouri, um, most of the rivers in south east missouri are spring fed um, this one happens to be on the merrimack um, merrimack caves down there and a uh, hundred thousand other things to do around that but anyway so you pull in off this road and right here it says i think it says floating what's it say floating treetops so they have like a ropes course and uh, a couple zip line things if you're into that uh, it looked really fun, and I can't really ever get Elizabeth talked into doing stuff like that. She's tried it before. It's just not something that she's up for doing. But you pull in. Um, everything's pretty well marked. This is where you start, and then you just there's a couple double doors that you can go in, and they have a huge store. Uh, the inside of the store has everything you could possibly need in case you forgot something, um, even for campers. They had a really big um, tent camping area and also RV supplies. Even if you needed a new hose or whatever, they had hoses and stuff in there too. So um, kind of a big deal. Uh, you are kind of far away from everything. I think we're about a half hour off of the interstate when we're here. Uh, so you pull in. We didn't go find the pool. And um, we weren't really mad about it. Um, but they did have a pool. It was kind of late in the year for us anyways, and we weren't really there to swim in the pool. We had the river. So, uh, right here, it's, uh, called Paddler's Grill. Uh, we did eat there Saturday night and it was really good food and it was right here on site. It took them about 40 minutes. So I ordered it. I went back to the campground or to our site and, uh, just hung out. I think we went up there in our swim gear. I went back, changed clothes. And uh, by the time I got up there, it was done. It was hot and fresh. And it was, like I said, it was really good food for having it so close to the campsite. Uh, I believe all of these are tent sites. And this is, according to the, to the little legend here, it's the loud area. Um, not so family friendly, but they are pretty secluded. There's a lot of trees in between here and there. But all of these and all their RV sites are full hookup, which I thought was really nice. Um, they were working on this future shower house and um, the cabins. So if you're not into um, showering in your camper, they definitely had the facilities. I believe there was another one way down here amongst all the RV sites. And this was a two story one. Uh, there was bathrooms and showers on both levels, I'm pretty sure. And then they had um, some rooms. No, there was rooms on the top and then shower and bathroom on the bottom. That's right. And then they had a couple cabins. Um, as you can see, I believe these are all cabins here as well. Um, this says tube shuttle. They have a tube loop that um, just off of the road here, you come, you can rent a tube. And you can float this river, and at the end of their um, property, you can get out, get on the bus. And I'm pretty sure, we didn't really check it out, but I think you can shuttle um, back around. I don't know if it's all, you can do it all day, if it's like a one trip thing. We did talk to one lady, and she said it took her between 45 minutes and an hour to get from here uh, down to the other end. And if you've, you're taking two vehicles, it might just be something that if you had two trucks, um, you could just throw your tubes in and just drive yourselves back and forth. If somebody's not wanting to tube, they can maybe come to the end and pick your pick you guys up. Um, getting to our site, and I'm pretty sure that all of these on this on this particular row where we were were pull in sites. They weren't back in sites; they were pull in. So the camper was closer to the road than the truck is, which is typically backwards from most places we've been um, but there was plenty of room out front to um, pull the truck out and back it out and you we had room since our camper so small 
we had room to um, park behind it. We did have neighbors and no joke, these two that are circled right here, we were 1420 and they were 1421. We were, it was like a buddy site. Um, if you guys have ever seen those, it's just two, two campers um, next to each other. And uh, it was, it was a little different, but there was, I think there was only one other camper way down here toward the end, uh, closest to the shower house in our row. And it was just funny because like most of this area was empty. Um, I don't remember. Oh, these were all buddy sites. They were almost all empty. There was a few here and there. And then it was pretty sporadic throughout the, the whole campground. Um, as far as RVs. Now there were quite a few tents. These are all tent sites around the outside next to the river. Um, these are tents, tents, and these are buddy sites here as well, I'm pretty sure. But um, all in all, this was a really good campground. Uh, we really enjoyed it. They had a lot to offer in such a small area. Um, if you didn't want to leave, you don't have to leave. We did go to like a, uh, like I showed you that town. We did leave for, I think it was, we were gone for probably six hours, but we left early in the morning and cause it was kind of chilly when we left and it had kind of warmed up and it was really nice by the time we got back. So, um, so by the time we got back, we pretty much got our camping gear on or our camping gear, our swimming gear on and um went swimming um it was gonna be cold no matter what i'm pretty sure so but there were lots of people floating um i didn't really see any canoes come by but i'm not sure they come down this far i think maybe they pick up at the beginning of the site so like i said i didn't see too many canoes um, but it was pretty good. Uh, the river wasn't super deep right where we were, but it was really swift as far as the current is concerned. Um, this will be one that we get back to. I think we're getting ready in the video to head back home. So I think I got some footage of St. Louis. I like seeing the arch. It's kind of neat. But after that, I'm going to cut back in and tell you what's next for us. Okay, so what we are looking into is a Shasta 26 DV. Really, it's in my search history. So, just to check this out, um, and this is just a brief overview, I'm hoping to have a full blown walkthrough video in the near future. Um, this is 31 foot total, it's 8 foot wide. Uh, it's got 11 foot 3 exterior height and that's including all the stuff on top um, it's got a roof mounted AC unit I believe the 2021s are 9 foot 3 or the one we have I believe is 9 foot 3 and uh, I think the newer ones may be a little bit taller because they actually have a roof mounted unit as well instead of the window air unit uh, it's got 36 gallons each of the black and gray water and 42 gallons of fresh it's got a 20 foot awning and i think the interior height is somewhere around seven and a half foot i could be wrong but there was plenty of headroom for me um, a little closer view here it's got a full-blown pass-through storage uh, in the front of it on the campsite is a wash station in the area of my little arrow here. 
I think that's pretty standard on most Shastas. Uh, I think you'll find that on most of the bigger models for sure. Um, coming up to the steps to get in, we did opt for the Lippert um, solid step that folds up into the door. Uh, that was an option with a power tongue jack, the Lippert steps, and we actually upgraded the up to an oven. Uh, it's pretty. It's come standard with a three burner cooktop, but we opted for the oven option as well, and it came with the steps and, like I said, the power tongue jack. Uh, two propane tanks. I think that's pretty standard too, as well on on the bigger campers. Uh, these front doors going into the bedroom are not swing doors. They're actually barn style doors that slide on the wall right here. Um, they tuck out of the way. And it'll be nice to, to not have anything swinging into uh, that area. I, they've really maximized the space. Um, and it's also going to be nice not having to shuffle through this little skinny area. This is probably only, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches wide anyways. So to not have to slide through there will be nice, uh, you know, for either one of us. Uh, it's got two wardrobes, and the wardrobes are similar to the cabinet that I built uh, for the 17B. And that's a, a really nice option. If you guys haven't checked that one out, check it out. Uh, on the entertainment system or the entertainment center here, uh, there's all the wiring is in the wall or on the ceiling. It may be on the ceiling for the TV and stuff. Um, I think there's room for like a 42 inch TV on the wall, but I don't know if it'll actually support it. So, but there's a lot of room on this wall. Um, I think there was also a fireplace in this little cabinet that they have here. And I don't know if it was an option as well or not, um, but they did have the model that we looked at had one in it. Uh, coming to the sofa, it's a jackknife sofa. Uh, dinette and both of those are on this slide um, the bunk beds are more of a full size bed instead of the cot size that's in the 17b a bit bigger bathroom uh, it's got a, a sink in it which is nice uh, the shower is a little bit bigger and the head height in the shower is tremendously more than uh, the 17b and it actually has like a curved um, skylight deal in the ceiling so it gives you just a couple more inches of room uh, coming to the pantry it's like a bank of cabinets if i remember correctly that were floor to ceiling i think in the bottom was the heater uh, the fridge i think is a 10 cubic cubic foot fridge which is probably twice as big as the 17b and then just the storage. There was storage under the sofa. I think there's storage under the benches. Um, under the bottom bunk is a, a full length storage. And then outside it's got a big area for storage as well. Uh, under the bunks. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of the Shasta models have an outdoor shower um, back here on this back end. And, and that's pretty much it for the camper. Um, we're pretty excited about that one. That's our next big step for us as far as the camping stuff is going. Uh, there'll be a couple more videos with that one. I don't think I'll do any upgrades on that. Uh, it's a really good size. I don't think we're planning on ever upgrading that one. Uh, that'll be one that we keep for more, more than two seasons like this one is. Uh, we just come to the conclusion that we needed more space that was our review um i don't know if i said it before but it was uh what was it ozark outdoor resort i believe is where that place was um but we will definitely be back there um at least once if not twice next year it was pretty quiet um and i think we kind of lucked out on the noise level in that one but uh Hopefully the next camping video is in this big bad uh, 
new Shasta that we're getting. Uh, they had to build it. They gave us a 12 to 18 week build time, um, which we knew we were going to probably be facing some sort of build deal. Um, just because everybody's is kind of in the same boat. And they've been pretty upfront with us about what's going on um, as far as where our camper is in the process. And we're, we've been happy so far. And like I said, I'm hoping to get up there in the next week or so and before the weather turns cold and get a video of even if they don't do a walkthrough, just a walkthrough of my own video, I've been trying to get the service manager or the sales manager, somebody, even our salesman to, to give us a walkthrough and they've been kind of busy and I've been kind of busy. I got a weird schedule. Um, but hopefully in the next week or so I can get up there and, and do a walkthrough of that camper. Um, that way y'all can see what we're getting firsthand. Thanks for following us along. Sorry I kind of rambled on at the end. But um, we're super excited about our new camper getting ready to show up, hopefully in the next month or so. Um, if we have it, if we get it by the end of this year, we'll probably just bring it home. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, thanks for following us along. Remember, uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this one a big thumbs up if you like it. And uh, just stay tuned. Hit the bell for the notifications. Stay tuned for all our upcoming stuff. And uh, God bless. And we'll see you on the next one.